Hello, welcome to this video. So glad you're tuning in and watching this. I'm really excited to be doing this video. So I just have a smile on my face because I've got uh, Lynn Louise Wonders here with me and also Kelsey Bacon here with me. Uh, both, I mean, I can't even start to go through their bios. So I'll just say both mental health professionals, mm -hmm. play therapists, uh, awesome people. And we are talking about a collaborative project today that they did, which is this book, Miss Piper's Play for Playroom, Supporting Autistic Aunt Ava. And you guys co-wrote this book together. And this is what we're going to kind of be talking about in this video, what this book is about, why people want to get this in their hands and use it. Uh, obviously, I have a copy. I've had a copy, I think, since it first came out. It's a wonderful book, my full endorsement for sure. Um, and I'll share a little bit later about just the different ways I've used it because I've used it in multiple ways, not even mm -hmm. just with kids, interestingly, uh, mm -hmm. and how that has worked out. But welcome, you all. So glad you're here. Thank you. Thanks <laughs> Thank for having you. us. It's so exciting. <laughs> I think we should start mm -hmm. with just maybe one of you starting to explain just what the book is about, like the purpose of the book, what your goal was in writing it and putting it together. Well, I'll start just because the Miss Piper's Playroom is my series. And, um, and then I'm going to let Kelsey get into <laughs> more of this, but um, I had been writing um, this series of books about um, a, a play therapist who sees children who have different presenting challenges in therapy. And um, I wanted to include a book about um, an autistic child. And so I actually approached Dr. Robert Jason Grant because as the founder of Ot Play. And, um, and you recommended that I actually seek out an autistic person who's also a therapist to help me with this project. And it was just, of course, it was just a brilliant mm -hmm. A brilliant idea. And so um, from there, I invited Kelsey to collaborate with me and to co-author with me. And it just all unfolded from there. And so Kelsey really brought so much perspective, which is what I needed. And and um and and I and I want to turn it over to you, Kelsey, and maybe <laughs> you can talk a little bit about what was our intention together as we created this book. Yes. Um, so I think one of our biggest intentions was to be um, neurodiversity affirming and have neurodiversity affirming terminology, but there's also a lot of subtle things about the book that maybe some readers may not catch that's neurodiversity affirming. Um, I really appreciate Lynn because she listened to my feedback and took it in and was very open to different suggestions. Um, one of my first suggestions was that we do a female character because um, as an autistic female and a therapist who specializes in working with autistic women, um, females are often underrepresented on the spectrum. And so I thought it would be cool to have a female character so that we could touch on that, that, hey, females are autistic too. We're out there. So that was um, kind of my original intention. And then there was a lot of um, smaller intentions throughout the book that I can go into if um, you want, Robert. Well, I did notice uh, oh. like a little something in the book. Mm -hmm. There's a story here, you know, uh, Ava is coming to play therapy, which is applicable to like any child therapy, not mm -hmm. specifically play therapy. Um, and she's coming in for therapy. And so there is a story of her journey, you know, coming into this new space and being with the therapist, there's dialogue. But then one of the things I loved is, you know, at the at the bottom of every page is a pullout about something specific you'd want to understand about an autistic child. Like this one is talking about masking a little bit. And I love that th throughout the book. So is that something that you could speak about a little bit? Um. Yes. So there was some terms that I wanted to incorporate into the story, but um, for me, they're common everyday terms, <laughs> but they aren't for everybody. Right. And so um, I thought it would be nice if we could kind of include a little 
um, bit of psychoeducation about what those traits might be so that if someone is reading it to a child or to a student or their own child, that they can have an understanding of what it means so that if the child asks, they have a little bit of information. Yeah, yeah very nice, because there's a lot of <clears throat> information in this book. Uh, when I first got it, I I mean, I love, first of all, I love children's picture books and bibliotherapy, <laughs> like I just always have. Um, and I love collecting books that are talking about neurodiversity or neurodivergence in any way, because I know I'm going to use them uh, in a lot of different ways. So I was excited to hear it was happening, excited when I got it. And I really, <laughs> you know, not that I didn't think you guys would write a great book, but I really <laughs> was surprised by my gosh, there's so much content and good information in this book for a children's picture book. You know, this isn't just 10 pages of like, you know, five words on each page. Like you can really use this book in your therapy work. And there's some real substantial information here, like some of the terminology, some of the constructs that autistic kids are going to be dealing with and experiencing. And I'm assuming that was part of your intention. Yeah, definitely. I, if I could just say this, um, one of the things that Kelsey and I were so felt so strongly about is that we wanted this character to be coming to therapy for her anxiety. And she's, aut she's an autistic person and that's context for this particular individual. And so it was a chance to highlight the fact that, you know, children who are autistic don't go necessarily go to therapy because they're autistic. Right. Sometimes they go to therapy because they're, they have anxiety or life events that are happening and they're having a hard time mm -hmm. coping. And so this was a very delicate um, focus, I think, wouldn't you say, Kelsey, that we were, yes. we were addressing? Why don't you speak to that a little bit? Yes, um, and that's actually why in the title we used um, Supporting Autistic Eva was because um, we wanted to get at that idea that we are not, um, as play therapists who are neurodiversity affirming, we are not treating the autism or whatever neurodivergent um, diagnosis a child may have. We're treating the underlying things that come with that, anxiety, um, depression, identity work. And so we just really wanted to um, touch on that in the book. Yeah, I love that. Thank you for making that point too in this video, because that is absolutely true about the book and absolutely true what we want play therapists and child therapists. Well, what we would want any professional <laughs> working with autistic and other neurodivergent kids to, not, to understand. And that is very well represented in the book. Um, so something that I've discovered about this book that you guys don't know, because I haven't shared it with you yet, <laughs> um, <clears throat> is I have used it with kid clients. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I read a whole book to a child. Sometimes I just read certain pages. It kind of depends on what's mm -hmm. going on with the child and what's a good fit. But I have actually started giving this book to parents who are waiting in the waiting room and having them read it while I have their child in therapy with them as part of their own psychoeducation plan to learn about neurodiversity, to learn about their autistic child. And of course, I have encouraged therapists to read it who are new to these topics. Mm -hmm. That's something I talk about when I'm in a training and I share your book is actually, <laughs> maybe you could start by just reading this book <laughs> because there's just such good content in here toward that goal that, again, a parent, even a therapist who's new to this understanding could learn something from reading this book, not just for your kids, not just for your kid clients. Well, you know, not only did Kelsey bring her personal and professional expertise mm -hmm. to this, but she was also steeped in listening to um, conversations in certain groups on Facebook and in certain communities mm -hmm. 
and really listening for from other neurodivergent people what and specifically autistic people what they were noticing was um, either irritating about things that are already out there or that were maybe missing. And she would bring that feedback to our meeting. We met on a regular basis. And so this was a project where we were tweaking and shifting. We even changed the character's name one time because <laughs> something, um, you know, so we were really, she, she was doing a lot of that listening and I was listening to everything she was bringing. And so don't you feel like that, Kelsey? Like it was like a, yeah. a, a molding process, like pottery on the wheel, you know, we were moving yeah. with this and just, it just kept kind of changing form. And because we wanted this to be just right. We wanted this to be really representational and, and truly helpful. And I think it comes at a time where everything has shifted. And Robert, you've had a huge, you know, a, a huge contribution to this. There's been a big shift just in the last year, last two years of, of opening all of us up to what it means to be neurodivergent and to work with neurodivergent neurodivergent people and how to be sensitive and 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 um helpful um yeah. and, and not offensive um and so mm -hmm. i just want to thank kelsey because she really helped me to learn so much in this process and lynn was very patient with me <laughs> as a neurodivergent person i came with gazillion ideas that she had to help me break <laughs> down into what would be appropriate for a children's book instead of an <laughs> entire novel. So. Right. Well, you can still write the novel. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Maybe you're working on it. Uh, <laughs> well, it shows. I mean, you know, your process shows in the product because it's a quality book. It's a quality product. I can't imagine, you know, any, any child or play therapist getting this and buying it, getting it into their playroom, getting it into their office, getting it into their waiting room and feeling like this is not a win for them because it's just got so much good content in it. And I know I keep saying that, but like it really does. And uh, that's why it's so important that we're specifically highlighting this book and showing it to people and letting them know about it because I know I mean, I feel this way. I know you feel this way, Kelsey. I know you feel this way, Lynn. I mean, I want our play therapy and child therapy community to be doing neurodiversity affirming care whenever they have a neurodivergent child in front of them and on their caseload. So tools like this help, you know, it helps the child, but it, and it helps the therapist help the child, but it also helps the therapist uh, to learn too and to grow. So such a great book and any <clears throat> final thoughts, do you have any like favorite things mm -hmm. about the book? I, I didn't <laughs> ask you this ahead of time. So <laughs> I'm putting us all on the spot. We could all share like a favorite thing about the book, I suppose. Right. Maybe we have to look at it. <laughs> I'm like, I have to find the page. Um, I have two I know you said a favorite thing, but that's okay. You two. can have two. Yeah. Um, one is that um, not only were we focusing on um, a female character, but some of the autistic traits that um, maybe are lesser known um, and not as common and a little bit more subtle sometimes. So that was another thing that I wanted to incorporate with Lynn because um, just increasing the knowledge of what it actually means to be autistic. And then also, I like the part where she's um, meeting with the um, teacher to yes. provide support on accommodations. I feel like that's a lot of our work, too, when we work with individuals who are neurodivergent, is yeah. helping to accommodate for the needs and things that um, they might need for an environment to be supportive and to be accommodating. So those are probably two of my favorite parts of the book. I, awesome. I like the um I loved learning about special interests. I mean, I had <laughs> already known about it a little bit, but Kelsey really explained it to me. And and Kelsey brought a lot of, I think some of her personal um, flavor to this. And <laughs> I loved how we incorporated that she shared her special interests with Miss Piper. And then Miss Piper utilized that mm -hmm. to help generalize that ownership of that to um, 
um, assist her with her friendship, uh, her socialization at school when she found a friend that shared some of those special interests. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a nice um, example mm -hmm. of how we as therapists can be that bridge between what a child is experiencing in their lived experience mm -hmm. and then helping them to own that and then generalize that to their experiences and, and the other systems in which they're embedded, your school systems yes. and play systems. Yes. Yes. And I think, I think just to further illustrate that point just a little bit is um, a lot of Ava's traits were based off me and my experience. And <laughs> one of my huge special interests is fidgets. And so I'm like, hey, if we use fidgets, it'll be easy for me to talk about because it's my special interest. Yes. So um, just those other ways of incorporating things. I love that. We need to have like a fidget meeting. <laughs> and share all of our fidgets. Gosh, that I feel like take me like three hours, but <laughs> me too. It's going to be a long meeting. Um, well, I have two favorites too. Since you know, we can do. We decided we could do more than one. Uh, first of all, it's it's just a geeky thing, but I love that if that the child is coming to play therapy. <laughs> you know, that just it just makes me happy to see you know even just play therapy represented in books more. And my second favorite is just those topics you cover and you cover them in a way where it's this unique blend of like giving like this nice piece of information about this construct. But in the story, it's represented in very much readable form for a child to be understanding the masking, autistic burnout, stimming, sensory differences, special interests. I mean, there's a lot of constructs that get hit on in the story. And I loved that. That was one, one of the things that stood out to me immediately when I was reading the book. So I think anybody who gets the book is going to discover their own favorites. Yeah. So they should go get the book. Mm -hmm. um, I know that it's on Amazon. I'm assuming it's just go online, do a search. You're going to find it on Amazon, other places. Where you yeah, can, if you just go to Amazon and search for Miss Piper's Playroom, you'll see the series and it'll be in there or you, you that's probably the easiest way to find it, I found. And then also um, the self-esteem shop has a lot of hmm. the, these books, including this one, and they sell it at conferences, um, you know, yes. the APT conference, the one we're doing in uh, soon um, in September. And but but the easiest way would be to go on and just order it from Amazon. Yeah, super easy to get. And also just a quick shout out to your illustrator, right? Yes, she's she's in Ukraine. And so it's been a real honor and pleasure to work with her during everything that is going on in Ukraine to be able to support an artist um, there uh, financially. Um, so that was just another bonus. And I've been working with her since before the war. But, you know, she's been with yeah. me during the war and it's been a, a nice added um, benefit. Oh, that's great. It's nice to hear Okay, well, this is the book. Everybody who's watching this video, I mean, you've got a big endorsement from me, from Lynn, from Thank Kelsey, you. and I hope you go get it. And I know you're going to get some benefit out of it. Thank you guys for joining me and doing this video. Thank and you. And I will see you somewhere in person sometime, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Take care.